terms of in terms of employment, and you know, the GPR recently went through a hiring process, took in about 400 people. Uh, most of them were startups, so they're largely youths. Um, I, well, during my time as GMD of NMPC, and I've transited in different uh, from GMD to to both holding both portfolios as GMD and, and minister, and then now as minister of state for petroleum. But during my time as GMD, we didn't really hire new people, but we focused on trying to get a lot of the young people who had supplementary positions to rise up in the cadre and take uh, more serious responsibilities. A lot of promotions were done. Uh, you know, we came in on, on a sweep type regime, which was clean out the place, uh, keep the place clean, uh, follow transparency. And so one of the things we did was a lot of individuals who had had issues at all, no matter how tangential those issues were, we just, just let them go. And who else replaced them but young people? The average ages in, in, in NMPC today uh, are probably in, in the dimensions of, of about 30, 30, 30 and 40 brackets. Are the ones who hold basically the manager types in the manager positions. I mean, obviously, as, as you go up, up and, and the ranks into assistant managers, general managers, executive directors, and all that, uh, the age brackets uh, begin to clock. One of the major problems, for example, in NMPC now is you're having a lot of elderly people who are retiring. Uh, and, and quite frankly, we're not quite prepared for that yet. And so we, we need to almost promote and train in a hurry to get people who are in the lower cadre to begin to rise up to the medium scale cadre in time, just in time to populate the upper cadre. So you look at that from the perspective of opportunities, huge opportunities all over the place. You look at that in terms of employment, we've done our bit, not as much as we should have done because there was so much of a population in some of the poorer satchels. And if we're uh, going to run a region that costs costs and, and runs uh, professionally, we couldn't just be imploding that population. Uh, but uh, you look at what they're doing from PTDF in terms of training of youth. Uh, a lot of money is going into scholarships. People are, who are schooling abroad, who are schooling in Nigeria. Thousands of scholarships every year. Yet to provide a resource base for the oil sector. It's gone on for very many years. We're, we're very bullish about that. Um, because of my intellectual background, I'm sometimes very focused and I'm happy about it. We've reac reactivated sufficiently the PTD, uh, the, uh, sorry, the Petroleum Training Institute, PTI, and worry. Um, a lot of new intakes, uh, very expanded programs, uh, a lot more professional environment to train people for the oil industry. And bear in mind that it's not only the government, and we also look at what the oil sector itself is doing. Uh, look again, yeah, I mean, I came from Exxon Mobil. Average age there also in the regions of within the uh, early 40s and early 50s. Um, but a lot of bench strength in terms of young people. So opportunities are there. Now, the, a population for young people grow better, obviously, when you have a bubbling economy. Uh, this economy hasn't done as well as we would have loved it to do because of the, because of the difficulties of the uh, global economic system. Uh, but once we, uh, a lot of the reforms that we're doing take hold, and, and you then begin to see the companies and the private sector do very well, what you're going to then find is an inclusion of opportunities for them. The Federal Ministry hiring said so the one the uh, uh, DPR did will be a free-for-all interview, a free-for-all exam process in which people, people then get calibrated on performance. Um, uh, and I think the training and technical knowledge of what the actuality in the oil industry is, which happens in say PTI or through the scholarships that they get, is very, very helpful. But we don't train people largely to be consumed by government. We, we must move away from the fact that government employs everybody to a point, but to a point where the private sector really is the main engine. And the private sector today, most of, I would say about 70% of those hired by the private sector and the major oil companies, the private producers, are coming from some of these trainees. They're coming from people who have experience in these sort of sectors. Uh, government is picking up obviously quite a few of those. Um, so, yes, it is working, but I'd love to see it transit from uh, people living in institutions to look for work, to people living in institutions to actually set up work. I'm a, I'm a big fan of mom and pop type companies the two, three-man companies who are offering one select service area and then grow a period of 10 years and become their own masters. That is the engine growth of this country. That's where we should be going. Uh, and I'm hoping that over the next five, six, seven years, uh, post-election, you will see, you know, it's, you've seen that in the, in the entertainment industry. Uh, you've seen that in the, in the services industry, in the telecom com, um, industry, you know, especially in IT, IT programming and all that. I'd like to see that happen in the oil sector. And, one of the things that I've put together is a program I call the Project 100. Project 100 is supposed to identify young, vibrant companies, uh, not the big ones, who are beginning something very, very unique uh, that we can be proud of, run by very young people who need special attention and special care and special business opportunities. And that's one of the things my team is working on, identifying those companies, beginning to see how we can give them uh, seed support, whether it is uh, assessing funds through NCDMB 
or seed support in terms of uh, resource and hiring and technical skills. And that, that is on. Out of the out of the meal uh, analysis, uh, which was uh, there was a consulting company working with PTDF and a team of experts from there, uh, sorry, for working with NCDMB, and they were able to look basically through job opportunities to people who have done work for oil companies, who have done work for NMPC, and identify those who have offered services or have wanted to offer service but didn't get the opportunity, and then they begin to look at their bench and what people were they lacking, and so they picked out the ones who have shown some unique skills. A lot of these companies are people by probably a sole individual who has a unique geological uh, skills, uh, unique engineering skills, unique uh, marketing skills, and a set of something just looking for an opportunity. Uh, and then we're trying to be able to say, okay, let's identify them. What do we do for them? Uh, what, what, what? Uh, and if you're employing more than 10 people, the better, you know. Uh, so that's ongoing. It was a very quietly done thing. Uh, the whole 100 haven't been identified. And they've identified about 30 or 40, and that's just the beginning, and we keep identifying more and more. But once people get used to the fact that uh, we're giving special attention to these sort of setups, uh, it, it's incentivizing for them. Uh, you're going to find a lot more people jump into, jump into that side of the soul. First, I think I wear two hats, uh, so let me, let me plead my bias first. First, I wear the hat of obviously being the person who runs the oil sector for the country for now. But I also wear the act of the individual who started, quite frankly, your, your, your entertainment industry in this country. Uh, Nollywood, uh, Nollywood, as you know it today, mm -hmm. was just started by some of the films that I did in those days when the sunset with the Center, when we went to the movies, um, publishing hints, um, Chanel, complete fashion, and all that. Yeah. So I wear both hats. And what I'll say is, uh, first, it's not true that the, the, the entertainment industry has taken over as the lead area uh, for population of young, young, employee, uh, young, young employees. The oil sector is still, is, still the, is still the rosy baby in the house, and largely because it's a very organized sector. The rewards are good, and people can plan their future very idealistically. However, in terms of uh, creative ingenuity and, and, and business entrepreneurship and self-control and self-leadership, and self the entertainment and IT industries have moved ahead. Um, but, but obviously what we need to do, and I totally agree with you that they need support, they need help, um, is to find a, a common fund uh, that we can populate. And, and I haven't put my thoughts around it. I have done these things on my own side on a fairly private investment basis. Uh, but you look at it, it's a typical movie today in Nigeria, and it's not making money. There's a lot of fanfare, but when you look at the numbers, the numbers are very poor. I think first we've got to develop a business frame that enables them to survive in a very difficult business environment. Nigeria can be a very difficult business environment. But two, you need to have a centralized fund that they can assess and, and provide the right kind of, uh, maybe a, sub, a subdued type of uh, terms of engagement so they can take money at fairly loose, uh, but be able to pay those money back because if you don't have a revolving facility, it will not last. Mm -hmm. And, and I think uh, banks like Bank of Industry, maybe working with um, um, uh, the, the oil sector, for example, can do that as a CSR. These three years haven't been the time to focus on those, I, I must confess. It's been a very difficult three years, and, and I don't think Nigerians sometimes understand the sort of difficulties uh, that we've had to go through in three years. Um, if you look at where we started, uh, we came in at a point where production, quite frankly, was down to 800,000 barrels. Price was $28 a barrel. Paying staff salaries at federal level was, was, was a nightmare. And, and that's why one of my first jobs, and then you had militant activities all over the place. My first job really was to even get the oil flowing, uh, find money to meet uh, recurrent expenditure, then begin to look at capital projects. Uh, you know, so it, much as there are lots of us with those sort of dreams, uh, the pulse hasn't been there. And, and in th that era, what you're worried about is making sure that you're very profligate in terms of how you spend. You're very careful about how much, how much you spend, uh, how you can cut down costs. And you see somebody, you look at some of the initial reforms we, we're doing in NMPC and, and, it's, and the oil sector is largely focused on cost, efficiency, time, that sort of stuff, because the volumes were not there. Hopefully now we're getting to a point where the volumes uh, are back. Um, unfortunately, the price pendulum is also shifting again. It's gone from an exciting number for me of 80 and now down to today, I think, about 56. So it's, it's tumbling down very rapidly. Um, and so you've got to therefore be careful what even you, you embark on. Uh, but I do agree with you in terms of, I share the sentiment that something needs to be done, especially because a lot of young people are putting attention in there. You need to, you need to provide a seat for them.